Welcome back to the Hank's Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So, so this would be a good thing, Matt. Just tell us here, what can... How should someone think about this if they want to make a stand gun? What what do they need to know? What are the myths? What are the the myths that you can bust about stand guns and or is it is it too complicated? Do you so think? well, like I mean, you know, it's and I don't know like how into you know doing garage machine work your audience is right, but that's where it goes down. Is you'll see people arguing on you know these forums or whatever the hell about how oh no you need to use a reduced diameter tube and you need to like you need to have it to where there's a time release uh you know locking mechanism to where only your thumbprint can take the bolt out otherwise atf's going to say it's a machine gun and it, you, it like the cocking handle has to be at a different it's all just nonsense it's all mm. made up but in, and this is it's interesting because the sten gun is the source of the myth that open bolt semi-autos are illegal because a, a while ago i think it was um was it catco or it was some other company wanted to market a semi-auto open bolt sten, and mm. they were literally just welding the selector in semi. Uh, that was done. I don't a long, know if it was that was done. That was done a long. That was done a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was in the wow. early '80s, and they went to ATF to ask for, like, to say, "Hey, uh, what do you think?" And ATF mm. was like, "ATF said, no." Because this is just a machine gun that you've locked into semi-auto. So it's not that it presently will shoot full auto. It's that it was designed to shoot full auto. Nowhere okay. in the ruling did it say that it's because it was open bolt. No, like, in fact, they mentioned other components of the guns many more times than open bolt. But it was the fact that it was literally just a machine gun that if you spent five minutes with a you know, file or do a single pass of a milling cutter, it's immediately just a completely reliable, fully automatic machine gun again. Okay, and so, so that, mm -hmm. that turned into people, it went from, hey, this gun you're trying to sell is literally just a machine gun that you welded into semi-auto mm -hmm. to all the forum dwellers going, oh, well, that means you need to do X, Y, and Z. Oh, it also means that all open bolt semi-automatic guns are banned because they're machine guns. It's like that's hold on. There's something in the between there, right? Yeah. So I'm a little confused in there, Walt. Uh, you might have to uh, bring me up to speed. Uh, yeah. Please. How how does that work exactly? That it's semi-auto open bolt. First of all, just so I could <laughs> three dimensionally figure I, that in my brain. The open bolt semi-auto went away with the Mac Ten. That's in okay. the early '80s. Early Mac, the Mac 10 was, I used to have one. It was an open yeah. bolt semi auto. Too many people, easy to convert. You know, it was, it was a thing of the drug, the drug, the drug no. people, you know? Yeah. You're doing it. And, You're doing it. You're and, making things up. So that, so, okay. So let's explain that for the people. This is a good I, opportunity. You know, cite, making that cite, up. cite the law. You are, you are making that up. Cite the law. Cite, that the, is, cite the ruling. Cite, tell me where it is. Tell me where it happened. Let me, let, let me just I'll give say you this. $1,000 if you can tell me legally where it says that. I will give you $1,000. Let me just say this. If you make an open bolt semi-auto mm -hmm. from scratch, you are going to get a visit. And there's going to be no, <laughs> there's going to be no getting out of it. No, no. You're I will gonna, give you a thousand dollars if you give me any support for your contention. In writing, so obviously in this writing, is a so so obviously this no, is a big like, this is a this yeah. so this is a big myth, uh, Matt. So let's let's no, like, like where did this or or maybe no, it's, it's not a myth, but obviously myth. we can obviously it's, we can argue about it. Where right. so let's find out from Walter. Walter, where does it where did this come from? Like how long have you you know what's your history looking at this kind of stuff versus what Matt like being a lawyer. And and spending well, a lot I mean, of time looking. At I remember this stuff. when the Mac. I remember when the whole Mac Ten thing happened. They mm -hmm. deemed them machine guns. Anything with an open bolt was considered a machine gun. Period. Boom. Show me. Done. If it was manufactured after that date, wrong. Which is, uh, dated, wrong. It, they can't do that. They cannot do that. They okay. never said that. And everyone repeats this. So I will give you some grace well, though. <laughs> if you take a parts kit, that's a machine gun, and always, weld it up. Machine gun always. Always machine. Okay, no, stop, 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 stop. No, That's okay. not true because once the receiver's gone, the machine gun's gone. Okay, 
But I'm gonna tell you, so I'm gonna give you some grace. If you take a parts kit, a machine gun parts kit, you don't change anything. You weld it back up and you weld the selector close or you do something to where you can't move it from full auto, that's gonna be a machine gun, okay? That's still gonna be a machine gun, but it's not for what you're saying. It's because that weapon, when you haven't changed anything, right, when it's still got the same trigger group and everything's still the same, was designed to shoot automatically. Okay. Once a machine gun, always a machine. Okay, gun. you're saying that again, and, and you're and well, you're technically wrong, right? that, so, that wouldn't that no, wouldn't be. No, you just, that you just apply at all. said what I you just said the what I is, said. It was des it was designed to be a machine gun. You welded it back together. It's still a machine gun. No, no, because the gun when they cut the gun, it was gone. <laughs> it, the gun went right. So it's not once a machine gun, always a machine gun. Once a machine gun, always a machine gun is why D Watts are a thing. This is if you rebuilt the gun without modifying it. You made a new machine gun. It's not once a machine gun, always a machine gun. Once okay. a machine gun, always a machine gun is just for D1. The, re the results are just the same. Though. No, because you're, 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 when it's once a machine gun, always a machine your gun. Your trip you to the federal gun. magistrate will be just the same. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not you, like I practice in when, front of them or anything. No, I, no, no, no. I, I get what you're saying, but I'm talking for the common guy that does stuff in his garage. He yeah, no, don't just a, weld together a, a, parts kits. Don't do that. Like, don't just weld them together. But, you you won't get you yeah. won't get out of it under any excuse. <laughs> you won't get out of it. Okay, so listen, well, listen. Why do you say that, so though? so hold on a second. Hold on. I think this is like a great opportunity for us to explain stuff to yeah. not me because I totally yeah, I understand everything going on here. No, I don't. So listen. So Walt, you're a manufacturer. And you've been doing this stuff and for a while. And and Matt is a lawyer who's you know been also practicing here for a while there's obviously like a massive gray area here and this is where these things well, come no, from because people well people don't know so there's lots of people yeah, who right, have the right, same right. this is something you probably find all the time right matt yes so, so we've got to break it's, it's it down to people okay <laughs> so and like okay, i okay, understand you, you have a very good faith and you're 100 percent good faith like 100 percent. and i like you and i still want to come check out your machines i don't know you're just saying nonsense that has been repeated. You have no, like, and, and you shouldn't do that. Like, especially when it comes to things that are in, that affect your rights and things that are matters of federal law. If you haven't seen it in black and white in front of you, you shouldn't assume it to be gospel. If you want to, and you know what people always say, go talk to a lawyer. Well, this is something that's really weird. And most lawyers are just going to be like, Christ, I don't know. You know, like I wouldn't do that, right? Because the, you're always going to advise your, your client to stay, you know, if the line's here, you're not going to mm -hmm. tell your client, you should stand right here. You know, you're going to tell them, you should go like over here, you know, because guess what? Malpractice, right? Um, um, also, no, you know, this is not like, so when you're dealing yeah. with this kind of law, it's not like if the eight, it's not like if you do the right thing and the ATF not, comes after you, the lawyer's going to go, listen, you only have to pay us if you, you know, if we yeah, win. If you lose. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Like, you know, it's yeah. a, you yeah. have to pay yeah. that lawyer. <laughs> Yeah. First thing, you're not dealing with most of none of this is half three ninety nine percent. This is not law. Well, oh, hold There's on, no, yes, this, it is. No, no, it's actually, not no, a, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's on, not yeah. officially law. It was not passed by Congress. Right. It's not a law. Right. Yeah. Now it's, yeah. It's, but it's I want to hear you. I want to hear you go. It's, yeah. it's just regulatory garbage that they say they can do anything they want to you. Like you can't okay. collect your own rainwater. You can't collect yeah. your own right. rainwater. You know that. Yeah. So right. when you go when you go to you're going to get 15 different lines and stories, and they got, they're going to keep you in the court. I don't know. If you got a couple hundred grand, you want to play with it? I, I okay, don't so have let's, a couple let's hundred go, grand. Let's take a step back because you're, I mean, I've, everyone's heard the things you're saying a thousand times. I agree with you. This <laughs> is not from law, but it's also not from regulation. The most frustrating thing that gun owners have to deal with is making up nonsense and applying it to ourselves. Because mm -hmm. what happens is we get a regulatory letter, not even a ruling, a letter, an opinion letter. Oh, I have and one. then see it? <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, we'll get yeah, to that. No, 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 we're going to get to that. Let's, about that yeah, let's, get, compar uh, let's compartmentalize well, this I, so I, that well, Matt so can so make I, his point. I've, your letter, well, your letter guess what? It has the legal significance of the bubble gum that I chewed earlier. It has nothing. It's meaningless. So you get your letter. And then everyone tries to gleam and pick from it, right? Oh, what were mm -hmm. they thinking? What did they mean by this? Mm -hmm. Well, in reality, I agree with you, Walter. It was just some agent 
making stuff up, right? They were just making stuff up because they wanted to expand their power as much as... It's human nature. It really is. But then the problem is, is that gun owners will create an, an emergent orthodoxy to follow without ever an actual ruling, Administrative Procedures Act rulemaking happening, without ever a, anything happening, without ever actually reading the law beyond the sentence that they want to copy and paste into their AR15.com discussion. That's like, to me, that's the biggest source of so, problems. In so, but, the where, but where does that, so let me just interject here for a second. Where does that come from? That comes from fear. No one yeah. wants to be the person getting their doors kicked in, you know, with the, mm -hmm. the like getting arrested and dragged out of there and your records. Right. And now you've got to figure out where you're getting a hundred thousand dollars from to, to hire the right. lawyers. So that fear creates like what we're talking about right now. Right. And the, that's yeah. the thing about the gun community is that it's an all or nothing game. Right. Because everything's a felony. Like everything, you know. So it's natural for mm -hmm. people to be extremely apprehensive. Mm -hmm. And it's natural for people to want to be a mile away from the line. Right. Mm -hmm. But we shouldn't ever make up things and say that they're the law. Right. We can say, I don't want to mess with that. Like, and that's fair. That's 100% fair. Guess how many open bolt semi-autos I've made? No, no I don't want to do that. Oh, so you're not doing that. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't want to. But it, well, actually, I think... Is it, because, is it, be, is it, is it because you don't want to be approve. a test case yourself, or...? Well, no, because well, I think I can make one that they'll approve just so I can rub it in all of your faces. I'm just, oh, okay. I'm gonna, when I get that approved, I'm going to bring it to your uh, no, that would be awesome. houses and go. Oh, that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> if it would be no, awesome. It's be dreadful if so because no one should want it. It's an awful, terrible thing. But anyway, oh, okay. but the, just the whole point is mm -hmm. an open bolt semi is stupid. It's not good. Um, mm -hmm. But why did we make up this orthodoxy? And it came from the Sten. It did. People think that it was, um, you know, a lot of people attribute it to the Mac 11. It all happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and nothing ever actually happened you can wave your opinion letters wherever you want we've got all kinds of opinion letters on bump stocks mm -hmm. they're meaningless mm -hmm. nothing happened with open bolt I'm not going to mess with it but why do we have so what's the, what's the history here that what, what's the history that you're talking about and Walter's talking about remember I'm not as deep into this as you okay. guys but now I mean it's it's really interesting to me so I want to so know where that so where yeah where did this come from so there's three opinion letters mm -hmm. and this is what people always talk to when they say the yeah, ATF say ruled in Determ determination letters it's their not, opinion letters those, I mean that, opinion that letters, letters are and also we we changed all of these terminologies recently because it was determined that the ATF was aggressively violating the APA. Um, who changed right. it? Who changed it? The, um, well, it's been changed like four times, right? But, uh, mm -hmm. the Trump administration actually did a, one of the very pro gun things they did was actually put a little bit of a noose on ATF. Okay. Well, at the same time, you know, feeding it steroids, but, mm -hmm. um, so, but still they were non-binding. Mm -hmm. These three letters referred to Stenmark 2, mm -hmm. Mac 11, Mac 10, and uh, there was a third one. I, I, I can never remember which one it was, but it was some other, you know, the, oh, it, Tech 9. Mm. These were guns that, all of them, functionally identical to the machine gun with the mm -hmm. addition of a disconnector. And in each gun, the disconnector could be defeated in less than one minute with simple hand tools. Okay. And so ATF determined, right? And this is a debt letter. Is a, it, it's not a APA determination, right? It's not, this isn't a notice and comment rulemaking. This is, this is the same thing that Rare Breed got, right? Okay. Uh, it's, hey, we looked at this and this is what we think. And this is, the point of it is, if we were to do a criminal case, this is the argument that we would make. So in all three of those, they said, not, and they mentioned open bolt only in one sentence in each one. They mentioned the disconnector multiple times in each one because the disconnector was the focus of the rulemaking. So that's the easily the, defeatable thing. Yes. And okay. because of that, those three guns, they just said, hey, these are, you know, blah, blah, blah. So the industry goes, you know what? We don't want to mess with it. 
reasonable thing to do, right? Okay. Reasonable thing. But they never to actually went after anyone. And here's the thing. People always say if it was made before 1986, you can't do that. You can, the ATF does not have the power to do that. Okay. So what happened at the end of all those letters was this like kind of like fairy dust sprinkle where they said, oh, uh, but you know, this is, this is what we think now, but we're going to use our discretion hmm. to not enforce this against guns that were made before this date because it would have been a total nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, it was basically, so this whole practice was, hey, industry, and you are right, people were, you know, people in Miami were buying these guns and they were taking the disconnectors out, right? Um, they wanted to stop that. So they were like, hey, gun industry, can you like, make it a little harder <laughs> you know basically okay. is what happened and then we went from there to just oh well, what did they mean by this and i've i've spoken to you know i'm not just blowing it out my backside i've spoken to multiple special agents within atf and they like laugh with me about it they're like i don't know where they get that there's three debts right mm -hmm. on three guns it, it like they do not have the power to say open bolt equals machine gun mm -hmm. they have the power to say this gun is a machine gun. Mm -hmm. uh, but everybody just took it from there. And it was so and they so nothing. so they never so basically they created a superstition in the industry that created this fear and the industry said, Don't even go into this zone. This is like and also the market no, didn't want them. Don't don't go here. Right. But they yeah, never exactly. actually went after anyone, but no one wants to be that person. That they right. go after in the first place because right. it's like the looming threat that you could be the one they go after, right? And That's also, it would be very difficult to design a traditional open bolt. Um, like everybody, always, when you talk about open bolt guns, everybody always thinks about, you know, stents, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. It would be very difficult to design one of those that wouldn't be easily um, defeated, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, there is nothing in the law that says readily convertible. It's yeah. a question of whether it's designed to shoot full auto or not. So okay. it would be very difficult to design a open bolt like submachine gun that was not designed to shoot full auto. I mm -hmm. think it can be done. It would defeat all of the reasons to make a gun open bolt because it would suddenly become incredibly mechanically complex and expensive. Um, and so I think literally the only reason it should be done is to show people hey, that it can you, be like, done. made something up. Like, you, yeah. you just made it up. Why'd you make it up? Right. Yeah, Boss Hog has an interesting thing to say on this, and I'm going to let Walter, like, uh, make his point after that, but I just think it's interesting. Boss Hog said they sprinkle crack on it. <laughs> and I think that's interesting because maybe they were looking at these in that time frame, right? They got some from the CIA. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. So, Walt, what were you going to say, Walt? Did you forget? No, well, mm -hmm. no. You said no one's ever gotten in trouble for open bolt. That's not true. Manufacturers, maybe not. Not mm -hmm. licensed manufacturers. But mm -hmm. there's been lots of individuals that have been busted for machine gun for stuff what? and open bolts. Open bolts. Right, stuff. for having building machine Mac, guns, right? Building Mac 10s and stuff like that. Uh, even that Sten guns. They've got, mm -hmm. Right, correct. They've got people yes. for that. Um, and that's a machine yes. gun. Okay, we'll say that. They made machine, machine guns, right? No, guns. so have you, have you heard of a person <laughs> who was busted for endeavoring? Somebody who, like, endeavored desperately to make a semi-automatic only firearm, put a 16-inch barrel on it, and all this stuff. Like, if you know of one of those, I'd be happy to pull the case up right now because I want to see it. I don't think so, anyone was crazy well, hang on, enough hang on, to... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, wait, hang mm -hmm. on, hang on, hang on, slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Close bolt? Yeah. No. I, open. No, I don't, like, look, no, no, You didn't say, you didn't, you didn't specify. So an open bolt 16-inch barrel, is that what you're saying? So if I'm saying... And, and there's multiple parts to this, right? Because then we have to go into a whole thing it about gets, how NFA violations... It gets violations. into all kinds of weird little situations. What ifs? What ifs? Well, no, 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 no. I don't it's personally like to works. play what if myself. Because what if could okay, well, cost that's a fine. lot of money. That's fine. And like, that's why you and I haven't made them, right? Like, that's, <laughs> I, I, that's why we don't make them. You know, Because we don't want to mess with it. Bump stocks and let's say whatever... Uh, triggers, binary triggers, all that stuff. Three or four determinations says it's all good. One, one day, it's not good. Yeah, overnight is it's not good. So there were I look okay. If you don't know what happened to me, I make a fifty caliber bolt action upper. Okay? I know. Go, I'm shot. Goes it. on top of goes on top of an AR-15. In 2018, I got a letter that says you might want to submit one of these for a determination. Um, now I've been making them since 2003. Um, 
there's like four other people got the same letter I did that made 50 calibers. Only 50 cal people got this stuff. Um, hadn't heard a word from ATF since 2003. I heard a rumor that in like 2007, this kind of went up the food chain in ATF and it died. Mm -hmm. They didn't pursue it uh, going after the thing. So I sent one in for determination. I knew what was going to happen. I went to yep. D.C. with um, Adam Kraut and... And um, Josh and his, Prince, yeah, Josh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. went into the, went into the den of the wolves, right into right. the building. Uh, had yeah. a meeting with Marvin Wagner and all the little, you know, all their little friends. Yeah, um, it was a waste of time, complete waste of time. It was a waste of money, complete waste of time. They knew what they were going to do. They're going to do it anyways. They said the upper is a firearm because it has characteristics similar to a bolt action rifle. Now, in their twelve-page letter, determination. Right. They also told me that my lower was a firearm, and I, my, mar my lowers have always been marked, single-shot lowers. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some wording in there that's very suspect and could probably be taken to a court of law, but I don't have 150 or 200 grand to hand over to the legal staff to fight it just to find out maybe I don't win anyways. So uh, I, that's where it ended. Now, yeah. The, law, the, lawyer, the lawyers asked ATF, well, what about all those, and there's a few thousand of mine out there at least, mm -hmm. and, and not including all the other ones out there. What, what are they supposed to do with all those? No word, nothing. Right. No response, no nothing. So, I... Because they just wanted you to stop because they had a hard-on for you for some reason. Well... And you well, know it. And they and they, using, have, they, they, they have the, they had the power to make that happen. They, they well, had, but no, they, they knew... Yeah, right, I, they, you know why they didn't go after them? Because mm -hmm. they knew they'd lose. They wanted you to stop making them, and they got exactly what they if wanted. And they, everything well, you I, did was reasonable. They would lose. Everything you did they was would reasonable. Lose, they would lose under these circumstances. If someone right. was kamikaze about it, and, the, and that person was like, hey, I'm going to fight this to the end. Yeah. But yeah, typically, the, the, the mom and pop yeah. store like Walter, he's not a, he's not a big manufacturer. No. Doesn't yeah. make Walter's or sell enough of it. those to fight it. Yeah. But so I, what's I, I still risk? make they them. Don't I, have just, any risk. I, just, I just serial number them now. Exactly, yeah. but like, but if they went after thousands of people, their risk goes up. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah, they, because and I mean, you acted very rationally. You acted a hundred percent logically. You did. I, I, I should have just as soon as I got the letter, just started serial number and saved the money to Adam and and, and company. Now, so I mean, let me still had to talk. To so them, let me you know, let, let, let me interject <laughs> this for a second, okay? Uh, Clint Sanders says, "Sounds like Matt is speaking legally, and Walt's talking about real world." And I think the thing, mm -hmm. see, this like. This, this is why I do this podcast. This is like an awesome subject that we're on right now. Because I think for me, knowing Matt for a little while, this is exactly how his brain works. And this is, what, this is how I want my lawyer's brain to work. How Matt's brain works. Uh, like, I had this, you I, know, I, I that, that's the way it's supposed to be. And on the flip side of that, Walter has to think, like, how do I keep feeding my family? <laughs> hundred well, percent. Also, Walter yeah. has been nothing but logical. You've been nothing but reasonable <laughs> about everything you've said. But the, the only thing that you're saying is unreasonable is you asserting that the law is something that it's not and you asserting an incorrect uh, interpretation of the law. Like, I mean, that's, and it's, it's not reasonable to do that. It's what's reasonable to say is someone in your situation is, I've got a family, I don't want to mess with it. And that's stupid reasonable. That's the most reasonable thing you could ever say. But don't say that's the law when you don't know what well, the law is. It's, it's Sorry, not, brother. Like, once, once again, it, it's not the law. But it's, well... No, no, no. Okay, so you're 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 doing this. You, you're moving the goalposts, right? You're going from oh, this it, is the regulation, but oh, I know these people that have been, uh, you know, prosecuted for making open bolt semis. No, you don't. It didn't happen. Um, and then you're like, but now we're back to here where my unrelated upper thing. That's not. That doesn't like the law and how NFA violations work and how violations of the GCA work. They have to be prosecuted a certain way. And you know what? What they do? They go after working class Americans. Because when you go after working class Americans and when you go after poor and minority Americans, exactly like you said, they don't have the money to put up a competent legal defense. And I think that's one of the most disgusting things about the entire gun market is they can get these rulings, right? And they can get these cases and they're never reported because guess what? When you go after a poor person, they don't appeal. Your case isn't, isn't reported. It's never cited anywhere. Mm -hmm. So nonsense happens. You, you can plea out to whatever and they'll get a win, right? A win. But it doesn't count. You can't cite that in the Seventh Circuit. You can't. You can't count, cite it in the Eleventh Circuit. If you're the person that, the, if you're the yeah. person that this is acting upon, if you're the person or the company that is acting upon, it's very real. 
So, like, I understand, like, and we're talking semantics, but if you're the person right. that these guys are actually bullying, it's a very real thing, you oh, know? For sure. um, yeah, and, no, but, it'll ruin but, your life. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, I think, and this is, correct me if I'm wrong here, the point that you're making, Matt, is that we got to fight all of this because if we let it go, it just gets worse. And, well, you know, it's e uh, effectively, even though it's not real, it's effectively real because yeah. it creates this big boogeyman in our brains. We're like, oh, wait, we can't. Yeah. We can't do this. We well, can't no, go down thank that Thank you path. for saying that. Thank you for thank you for pointing that out. I didn't mean to say it like it's not real to those people. Mm -hmm. I meant oh, it is because real. like and, <laughs> when like, they I shut your saying, business it's down, just and, like the and, they comp, and they confiscate all your stuff. Okay, that's, and that's then, not related to the that's original real. Thing that's about, real. Right? Well, that mm -hmm. happens. Right. That's uh, yeah. That's an non sequitur. I, I have but a friend who's in the gun business. The guy said Matt's thinking legally. He's right. I was speaking in terms of what is real in the law. Right. Mm -hmm. If some of this crap happens to you, it's the realest thing. Because I've got, I've had clients, I've had to represent people, and they are scared, and mm -hmm. they it, and they get so scared to the point where they're like, it "Listen, I don't even." They don't even care about. Well, no, they don't even care about right or wrong anymore. They're like, "Just get me out of here." Mm -hmm. Right. right? They just want out. And I've had to. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, they just want out. They don't care what happens anymore, and it's devastating, right? Mm -hmm. Because and then me, my oath that I take when they say I want out. And I know I can beat the case, but I can get him out, and it's going to be an L. I got to get him out, right? And it's, it's, it's really devastating. But, but that, we have to be super clear about things, though. And especially those of us who are in the public eye, we have a duty to not talk nonsense. We have to, we have to speak the truth, all right? And the truth is, when it comes to the specific point of discussion that we had, and I've trust me, I've read in depth about your 50 cal situation and you know what Walt? i wish that we had been friends at that time because i would have been scratching at your door saying let me do it for free um because what happened to you was bs oh uh, you can um, you can still fight it right or is it too late to fight that it would be well, awkward uh, maybe we'll talk about it i don't know but that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it would be awkward <laughs> now it would be awkward okay um, but but there's a but anyway like yeah no i'm with you man it's about it's about making sure, and, and for me, I've got to make sure my client is safe, right? Mm -hmm. So when I advise my client what to do, I don't ever tell them to go up to the edge. I tell them, here's where the line is. Stay away from it. Mm -hmm. But when I'm talking about what the law is, what mm -hmm. the courts have said, I'm not going to um, – oh, K&M Arm's great point. Total yeah, nonsense. He, he says Total this nonsense. whole thing happened to Tommy Bilt with the yeah. G36 ATF went after them. But, mm -hmm. but did they? This, but you did know, they? no, they didn't see. They didn't push too hard. They did it just right. They're surgeons at ATF, right? They do this. They get you right to the point where you're about to break, and then they let go, right? This is true. They I can't, ar I can't argue with you. They didn't make a single criminal, not a single criminal push. Because guess what? In the criminal context, your burdens of proof are up here. You need to prove that the person knowingly and intentionally violated the law every step of the way. That's why you can't think of any cases on that OP thing, um, because. They don't want to do that. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to push and they're going to need and they're going to get to the point where they see the crack and then they're going to step back, right? And that's what they did with the Tommy Bill. The Tommy Bill was a perfect thing because guess what? It was a niche gun. You know exactly where all those guns are. You know, you only make, you know, what, a, a matter of thousands of them. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.